Joined by our race winning team for the NASCAR Xfinity Series Lily Diabetes 250. Kyle Busch, driver of the number 18 NOS Energy Drink Toyota, your crew chief Chris Gale, and the Joe Gibbs Racing Vice President for Xfinity Series Operations, Steve D'Souza. Gentlemen, congratulations on a great win today. Uh, Kyle, tell us about those last couple of restarts and, uh, and how that went down. <laughs> Slower. We'll He'll come right back here. You. Chris? <laughs> Chris, what were your thoughts? Wrong pipe. All right. I still might struggle. <clears throat> um, what were what? <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> thoughts on restarts? Um, well, my thoughts were on restarts were to get really good ones, first of all. And then, um, you know, I was able to do okay there on that second to last one. I felt like I got a pretty good jump and was able to be single file getting into turn one and uh, could kind of dictate my pace from there. And then the last one, I felt like, um, you know, Harvick was pushing me just a little bit and then he kind of broke off and, and it must have been because the one car was pushing him and uh, he didn't... He didn't get more alongside of me, which I was kind of shocked about, you know, so I was able to, again, have um, my own way getting in turn one in my own lane and, and not have to worry about um, guys racing side by side by side with me. And then down the backstretch, uh, Harvick and Larson, I think, got side by side, which kind of slow, slowed them down, gave me a chance to get away a little bit. So um, that was uh, sort of the, the sealer for the coffin, I guess, and, and being able to put the race away and having the opportunity to cross that uh, restart line down the backstretch and and uh, know that there was whatever whatever flag was next was the end of the race. Chris, you guys have had now seven victories uh, this season in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of your secrets to that, that consistency. <laughs> uh, he's sitting to my left, and then, uh, you know, good cars. I mean, I think, what's that, seven with Kyle, and then one with Sam, one with Denny. So, I mean, obviously good cars are part of it. Um, but I think you just see that Kyle gets – more out of him than most. I mean, there's just no way around it. Uh, it's, he he's that good. Um, and then, you know, from there you just have good cars every week. We've just kind of had good cars last year, and we've kind of tweaked on them over the off season, made them better. And I think we're just kind of focused on ourselves. You know, just doing what we can to make our cars better, not paying attention to what the rest of the field's doing, and just kind of get tunnel vision. And that's all we do is just try to make our cars better. And I think that's working pretty well so far. Steve, you guys have enjoyed a, and seen consistently superior performance, not just from, from Kyle and Chris, but across your entire program. Talk a little bit about that consistency well, throughout the program. Yeah, I think Chris uh, landed on it, the uh, crew chiefs and our management group down at the Xfinity side, and of course with all the affiliation we have on the Cup side, uh, has just done a phenomenal job in preparing and thinking ahead and working within our own group on how to make our program better. And obviously Kyle's been a huge help on that. Uh, he and Chris, uh, Chris being our senior engine, uh, engineer, not in crew chief this year, um, have really done well in bringing along the other two teams. And we had a great day going with the other two cars today. They ran into a little bit of problem. But I think it just, uh, dis the display of the performance and how all three teams are running equally well is, uh, is uh, I, th I think, shows and demonstrates how hard everybody's working together back at uh, Joe Gibbs Racing. Excellent. We'll open it up for questions now for our race wing team. You'll raise your hand. We'll get the microphone to you. We'll start up front here with Bob. Bob Pockers, ESPN. Uh, Kyle, if you get out to kind of a, a second, one second lead tomorrow, you know, starting from the pole and everything, how how different of a feeling will it be with the way the cup cars drive? I mean, will you be as confident, less confident? Do, do you expect maybe a little bit more, you know, kind of comer, goers and comers in the race? Yeah, I, th I think with starting on a pole for tomorrow, it gives us a really good shot of being able to kind of set the pace of the race there early on and, and get out front a little bit. Uh, we have had really good cars on both the Xfinity side and the Sprint Cup side. So with today's race, you know, I was able to kind of set that pace and then uh, expect and hope to be able to do the same thing tomorrow. But competition is going to be a little bit different, obviously, with uh, the best of the best racing for the Brickyard 400 victory. I think you'll see some pitch strategy play its hand. I think you'll see um, some cautions play their hand. These cars, the Cup cars are a little bit harder to drive here and, and tend to move around a little bit more and the tire fall off is greater. So there's going to be, uh, you know, a bigger chance of just seeing uh, a different race for sure than what we saw today. We'll go to the back of the room to Diane, and then we'll come over here to Zach. Hi, Kyle. Congratulations. Thanks. Uh, Diane Cox with Advantage News out of St. Louis. Um, last year you swept the weekend, and, uh, and this week you've come in, and you've got the poll for tomorrow and won today's race. How has uh, last year's experience prepared you for this year? Because um, I'm, I'm thinking you guys probably look back to last year's notes. Yeah, no doubt. We'd certainly do every time we come here. That's that's the freshest set of notes that we have, you know. So 
Uh, we do go back to last year's notes. We look at that sort of stuff, and then we also look at our teammates' notes who came here and tested just a couple weeks ago. So um, we feel like they gave us a good baseline to work off of here this weekend on the cup side. But, um, you know, the Xfinity side, we certainly do, uh, you know, just that as well. You know, look at the notes and start from the same baseline and, and kind of work from there and making sure that we can keep up with the changes of the cars, the changes of the tires, the changes of the track. And, you know, this year maybe being a tick hotter, I don't know that we – we probably, you know, adjusted our car a little bit more than what we had last year uh, from practice to race. So um, you just got to be smart about it. And those things, um, you know, I, I really rely on Chris Gale here and also Adam Stevens. So hopefully we'll be good tomorrow. We'll go to your left to Zach, uh, then in the front row, and then to the Zach in the back. Zach Worrell, Butler University. Kyle, leading into this week, knowing how hot it was going to be, um, how much did you change uh, your preparation? And then also... With this dash for cash format, how much of a benefit was it to have the races broken up with as hot as it was? Yeah, I felt like um, I didn't do much different this this week in preparation. You know, I kind of do the normal stuff. I try to hydrate as much as I can throughout the week. And from going from weekend to weekend, you're you're basically just getting caught up before you get to the next weekend of, of being hydrated. You know, so um, just keep doing the same things that I've always done. Um, you know, try to get plenty of water and whatnot. But um, past that, I think today having the opportunity to break up the race a little bit with the heat races was was good for me being in the first heat i had an opportunity to go back and and uh, cool off a little bit and um you know change uniforms get into a dry one and, and just basically get ready for the um you know the main event um fresh and ready to go like you would for a new race you know so um that that was a, a good bonus for us sitting on the pole helped us if we would have qualified second we would have been back-to-back -back races from heat two to the main so obviously um I, I think it helped us car didn't quite get as heat soaked uh today as it did last year so um, that also changed just because of the break that we had. We'll come to the front row now. Kyle, Rob Peters of uh, IndyStar. Um, I think when you first started coming here and throughout the, the preceding, uh, the following years afterwards, I didn't really, it didn't really feel like this was your best track. Um, but now you won the, this race in 2013, and now you've won, you swept the weekend last year, now you've won this race today. I mean, what... What changed in that short amount of time? I mean, now all of a sudden, I mean, we, you pretty much own this place in the NASCAR side. So, I mean, what, what really changed there that got you all of a sudden just up front every single uh, lap right here at this track? Uh, I think experience certainly has, uh, has given me the opportunity to just become better and better here each and every year. Running the Xfinity cars has certainly helped my Sprint Cup effort, I feel like. And um, even even before that, you know, I think I finished second or third, you know, probably three years in a row before I was able to win here uh, last year. So our, our average finish is certainly going in the right direction. And, um, you know, hopefully tomorrow can be another good, solid, smooth day for us. And, um, you know, if we don't lead every lap, that's not that's not a problem. We just want to lead the last one and, and make sure that uh, we can try to take that checker flag home. We'll go to the back to Zach. Uh, Zach Tan's ready, French touch. Um, Braxton didn't seem to be liking the bricks too much out there. Um, did, did, did you think that would be something he would like doing, or were you surprised that he wasn't really into it? Uh, well, he's 14 months old, so let's, uh, let's give him a little bit of a break here. Uh, <laughs> He doesn't, he doesn't even really get high five or hello yet. So, um, you know, trying to get a 14-year-old to kiss the bricks is a little challenging. So, um, you know, I'm sure once he sort of gets the idea, there will be a time in which, um, you know, maybe I'll win a race and he'll want to kiss some bricks, or maybe he'll win a race and he'll kiss some bricks, you know. So who knows. But um, all in all, we... He, he sat there. I thought he did better than we expected him to. Last year, he didn't have a choice. He just sat there. <laughs> um, I think last year he was four or five months old, so um, you know it was a little easier to hold on to him. But now he's walking and running and trotting, whatever it is. He's he's hard to hold, so uh, he just wants to go, go, go. We'll come right up here in the front to Brian and then to Chris. <clears throat> Uh, Brian Everly, RubbinsRacing.com. Uh, Kyle, you kind of touched on the heat race format here today, but overall for the Xfinity Series this year, what's kind of your opinion on that being new this year, and would you tweak anything? Um, I think it's okay. I, I do feel like we can tweak a couple things. Um, you know, I think instead of two heat races, which, you know, lines up the inside row and lines up the outside row, I'd like to see um, four heat races. Um, I think, you know, if you get uh, a winner in the first heat, and then a second place finish, you know, you line them up, winner, 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 that's the top four. And then the second place car would start fifth. So, for instance, if I finished second, I'd start fifth, I'd actually have to pass cars instead of just starting third or fourth, whatever it might be. So you, you get guys farther back. I think that would be interesting. And I'm not really sure yet why we qualify to line up for the heat races. You know, let's just pick pills and just go for it. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter. You're going to have more passing. You're going to see guys racing their way 
past other people towards the front, and uh, it's actually going to mean something a little bit more to, to just do it randomly. So um, I, I think that would be a bit more exciting. I know there's some politics and things involved with poll day and all that sort of stuff. So uh, if NASCAR can work their way around those sorts of things, then um, you know we could probably put on a titch better show. We're we'll right back to the middle of Chris. Chris Knight, CatchFans.com. Congratulations, you guys, on the win today. Um, I, I piggyback on Brian's question, and then I got a follow up. How would you feel about a, uh, um, a draw? For what? For the heat races, like you know they. Yeah, invert, I, just, invert, I just said that. Yeah, draw it. Invert. I mean, what about an invert though? After the heats? Yeah. Uh, then why race a heat race? Why not just qualify and then pick a pill and invert us that way? You know. So you, it's one half dozen or the other. I mean, pick which way you all want to do it. Everybody's going to have their own ideas and they're smarter than I am. But um, you know that. Yes, yeah, my opinion for what I thought, so I gave it. Okay, and today's uh, 11 races run this year, seven wins, seven top five, seven top ten. So what can we expect? Do you expect this to continue for the second half of the season? For Xfinity? Yeah. Um, certainly, I'd, I'd like to hope so. I'm not sure exactly how many I have left, or, or I think that's ever-changing by the day with, with Matt Tiff. So we hope that he's getting better and he has the opportunity to get back as soon as possible to get in his, get in his seat and get in his car and, and go run some races. So, um, you know, I'm just thankful for the opportunity of, of Joe Gibbs Racing and and Chris being the crew chief and having the opportunity to go win some races here. So, um, you know, whatever the rest of my schedule is, we'll go do that. And um, hopefully we can have just the same amount of success as, as we have had here. And we're going to see what our teammates are going to be doing for the end of the season with racing for a championship. So we want to make sure that we give them um, as, as much room and respect as we can so we can see those guys, um, you know, go try to win a championship. Come to your front right to Mike. Mike Neff from FrenchStretcher.com. This is for Chris. Uh, the guys on the TV broadcast kind of intimated that this is like a placeholder for you. And based on the success you're having and just the ability you've shown that it won't be long before you are sitting on top of a box on Sundays. Do, are you wanting that immediately? Would you like to have some more seasoning? Where do you feel like you're, you're lining up to go to move on Sunday? Wherever I can be successful, like in a situation that's successful, sure, I'd love to go cup racing, but I don't want to do it if I can't be successful. You know, I won't. I'm pretty much in the best Xfinity team that exists, so why would I go take a step, you know, to something that wasn't going to be competitive at the next level? That that's kind of what it is for me. Is, you know, I kind of waited my turn. I've been at JGR a long time. There was probably some earlier moves I could have made that may not have been the best, you know. And then I got myself in a situation that I wasn't the happiest with, and I kind of had to recover from that a little bit. So I'm. I'm Trying to be smart about the moves you make going forward. Got a long career, still got to, still got to work for a long ways in front of me here. We'll finish up over here on the front left. Jamie Biggers, 1450 The Sports Buzz. Kyle, the Trucks Series implemented the uh, caution clock, as you know, and uh, you know the Xfinity Series does this dash with the heat races. Do you ever see anything like that in the Cup side, and do you think the caution clock could possibly work in the Xfinity or the Sprint Cup? Um. <clears throat> I'm Yes, no. I mean, I think it's debatable uh, whether or not people like it or don't like it. You know, I know uh, the drivers are a big proponent of trying not to add, um, what do we call it, cheesy distractions to a race and, um, you know, sometimes let the strategy play out of what a race may be like. And last week we had green flag stops in the cup race, and then with 40 to go, we got an odd caution that bunched up the field, you know. So, um, we don't like those either. You know, we, we'd much rather know when a caution is coming than just have one thrown because they want to see one. So um, there's certainly some things that we can do maybe as a sport to collectively um, make it better. But uh, I think the on product on the racetrack is first and foremost, you know, being able to make cars that can go front to back, back to front, whichever you want to say it. But once you get the good cars, the cars that are set up well with their drivers and their crew chiefs and everything out front, and then it's, you know, if the fastest car is first and the second fastest car is second, there's gonna, it's going to be hard to see passing. You know, there's going to be hard to see racing going on. So, um, you know, I do think that the heat races give you a chance to see some of that. I think inversions will give you a, a better chance to see some of that sort of stuff. Um, maybe the race is not quite being as long as they are uh, on Sundays could, could also be a, an opportunity to, to move around the needle a little bit. Gentlemen, thanks for coming in. Congratulations on a great win. Thanks. Thank <clears throat> you.